Hey gang, Ross Brand here for LivestreamUniverse.com. This is Livestream Stars, the show where we feature talented broadcasters delivering high quality content across live stream platforms. If you're hearing some noise in the background, Zani and Noah will be joining us from Europe in just a couple minutes. It's late there and she had to go out to a bar actually to live stream with us. So you may hear a little background noise, but it's all good. She'll be with us in just a couple of minutes. And as you know, Livestream live stream Stars is brought to you by Livestream Universe, LivestreamUniverse.com. Check us out. Uh, also, this is the season finale of Livestream Stars. We have a new show coming uh, next week on Thursday called Livestream Deals. It's going to be a show all about products and services for the live stream community. We have some great guests lined up. Chris Strub will be with us to talk about a new course he has. Uh, we'll have Kim Reynolds from Social Media Examiner talking about their annual event, Social Media Marketing World. Uh, the founder of BoxCast, Gordon Daly, will be with us on stream from uh, across uh, without a <laughs> without a um, computer or phone or. Uh, just with internet access and a camera. And also Dave Basolto from Myographer will be with us and talk about different gear that you can use for your mobile videos. And let's bring in tonight's guest. Uh, it's the season finale. Um, I'm so glad to have her joining us. Uh, the guest is Azania Noah. Welcome, Azania. Um, I hear some noise in the background there, so hopefully you were able to hear what I was saying and everybody else was. I heard everything. <laughs> so welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. I know it's late there. I'm, I'm doing the best I can <laughs> <laughs> under the circumstances. So, I tried to negotiate with the manager to turn down the sound of the music. Uh, <laughs> this is the best I could get with my smile and everything. And, and <laughs> telling them that it's live stream stars. It's American. Yeah, it's almost it's you know. American TV or American <laughs> Internet. Don't, no, don't, kidding. American. <laughs> kidding, 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 kidding. No, don't say that. Oh, the music will be back on louder than ever. So how are you? I'm good. I'm really, really good. I'm really good. And I'm excited. You... I'm happy to be here with you. And um, I've been, you know, watching the replays of, of a lot of the shows because since it is 1 a.m., um, right. I'm in Switzerland right now. I, I catch the replays so, <laughs> of the shows of this month. It was really exciting to see everyone and Kathy Nolan oh, great. last week as well. That was awesome. Well, welcome, everyone. Welcome, Patricia. Welcome, Sarah. Okay. Anthony, so great to see you. Uh, please do share this out. Let people know that Azani is here, and we're going to be talking with her about live streaming and the music industry, and also find out about some of her experiences uh, performing around the world. Are you actually on tour, or are you um, part of a production right now? Right now, I'm actually in Switzerland for several concerts during the month of September. So wow. it's, um, yeah, I'll be here the whole rest of September and then I'll go back to New York in, uh, in November, in October, sorry. Oh, just in time yeah. for winter. <laughs> yeah, and this is time for my birthday too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday in advance. Um, for those yeah. of you who, I, I assume everybody knows Azania, but for those who may not, um, she has been called the next Whitney Houston. She was a star on The Voice. She's a singer, actor, and recording artist. Uh, she's performed in over 800 concerts around the world, including for four presidents and at such prestigious venues as the Blue Note in New York City, the famous Apollo, of course, in New York City, and a variety of music festivals. Um, she won first plot prize in the French TV version of uh, American Idol, sort of their version of that, which was broadcast to millions of people. She also uh, was featured more recently on The Voice in France, and that was seen by over 8 million viewers internationally. Azani has 12 plus years of classical opera voice training. She's performed in Bands of many different styles, soul, funk, jazz, disco, electric, uh, house, gospel, reggae, music, theater, 
I don't think I missed anything, did I? <laughs> <laughs> she explores 70s soul and funk combined with other musical styles in her album Rising. And she's also a talented actress who performed in the short film Gracie, where she played a Kenyan immigrant who suffered domestic violence. She's an avid philanthropist and a Goodwill ambassador to the All as One Children's Center and Orphanage in her home country of Sierra Leone. And why don't we start there? Because obviously we're seeing okay. some some horrific scenes from Houston with flooding and, and people and, and, and through the south and southeast where uh, they've been hit hard by the hurricane. And I know that Sierra Leone also has been going through a difficult time. Talk about, you know, what's going on there and what your organization is, is doing to help children in, in Sierra Leone. Well, they're two separate things because right, the organization right. actually started in um, about 2000. It was during the Civil War because we had an 11-year Civil War in Sierra Leone, and uh, it ended in 2002. But there were so many orphans um, by that point that the All As One Children's Center was created, and I became Goodwill Ambassador for them in 2010. So they are still uh, working with orphans, working with just also children who are who have parents or one of the parents, but the parents are just so poor that they can't offer education, shelter, food, um, well, shelter, yes, but not food and education to their children. So um, so they have a school on the premises. They have medical, a medical center, and they house about, uh, about 100 children at a time, but they've had thousands uh, over the years. And the, the latest news of Sierra Leone, unfortunately, uh, is not positive. Um, we had a, a massive mudslide. As some people know, in, in West Africa, you know, we have rainy season. Um, at, at this point, it's it, it was just one of the highest rainy s levels of rain that we've had in years. And so um, just there are many mountains in Sierra Leone as well. And so just there was a massive mudslide. It's so big that... Um, we have basically over 400 people have died. Um, there are still a few hundred that are still not even found because they're under the mud, like it literally covered homes. And um, thousands of people are just are homeless. Wow. So it is, it is amazing. And of course, it's a country that's been through a lot already. It's a beautiful country, but it's been through so much in the past years. Uh, after the Civil War, we went through, you know, Ebola and um, lost many thousands of lives there as well. So it's, it's been really, thank you. It's been really, <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm just asking in French if, if they can possibly by any chance put the sound down a little bit more. Anyway, um, it, it was very, very difficult for, for a lot of friends and family to see that happen because it's just sort of like, yeah. What's next? <laughs> like, why can't we get a break? Right. <laughs> you know, but uh, but no, there are um, there are things that you know are being done. If if anyone is interested in donating, there are um, several organizations that I'm I'm also working with. So if anyone is interested, I I can make sure that the donations go straight to those in need. Right. Right. Oh, it's fantastic the work that you're doing. Um, you. Also, uh, I wanted to ask you. Uh, when I was doing some research back before I book each guest, I do a little bit of research and I didn't find it when I was looking at your website, but I swear I came across something that your grandmother or great aunt, somebody was a, like a tennis champion, like one of the first. Oh, wow. Winners. You really went deep in your research. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. My grandmother. Wow. <laughs> my grandmother was a tennis champion in Sierra Leone. Yes. <laughs> so was that um, was that like sort of the early days of women's tennis there, or what? Like, had women's yeah, tennis I, been going on for a while? How, it had how been did going on in? for a while. I honestly like I would have to have my mom here to tell me exactly how it went down. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I just I just was really proud to see the photo. <laughs> yeah, no. <I'm... laughs> but unfortunately, my grandparents didn't. You know, I I 
was very, very young when they passed. So I didn't get a direct, you know, communication and ask her about all the details. But, um, but you know, my grandmother was extremely um, liberal, just as my mother is. And she was a businesswoman. She had her own restaurant. She had... Um, yeah, she had several businesses going on, you know, herself. And so I'm sort of um, her and her husband, my grandfather was, was an entrepreneur as well. So right, I, right. I, I think, you know, she was just into, into sports at a young age. And right. my mother was also into sports at a young age. So, yeah. And now your mother's a, a diplomat or was a diplomat for the Yeah, she, she was a diplomat, yes, um, for the United Nations. She worked for the United Nations for many years. Right. And that's how I ended up um, in Switzerland, actually. Okay. Uh, oh, we lost your audio. Oh. There you go. You're back. I'm You're back? back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, – she was working here for a few years in Switzerland. I moved here when I was about, well, I'm not going to say my age because then people can calculate. <laughs> <That's> right, <it's, laughs> How many years I've been here. But <laughs> You're just amongst friends. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. No, but I, I, um, I lived here for 20 years and that's mm -hmm. how I also became fluent in French and things like that. But mm -hmm. she was here for only just three of those years. And, um, now she's teaching uh, at Wellesley College in Boston. Oh, okay. So, yeah, she's been there for quite some time as well. And so she's she's an academic, a diplomat. Yeah. Was she excited that you went into the music business, or was she thinking? I'm, I'm still working on that. Okay, you're still trying to convince her that it's the <laughs> right way to go? Yeah, it's just not the typical... African ch child, <laughs> like, you know, the parents don't dream of their children becoming a singer, you know, so, uh, right, right. uh, yeah, that's, that's, she's happy that I'm happy. That's right. the thing. So we've got, we've gotten to that stage and, and I think that's enough for me. Right, right. <laughs> you know, it'll never quite be, you know, what she had envisaged for my career, but, um, but I'm doing the best I can, and I'm living for my passion. So that's what's most important. That's right. And and you're helping other people with their passion. Um, tell us a little bit about what you're doing with Singer Elite. So Singer Elite is a platform that I put together. I started it actually on Periscope when I was live streaming because um, a lot of times I would just sing um, and just entertain on live streaming, uh, before Facebook live started and everything. And, um, some people would ask me in the comments, you know, do I give singing lessons and how am I, how am I, uh, you know, traveling and living from my singing and things like that. And I was like, okay, so I, I did some of the broadcasts, um, about it, but every time I would start those broadcasts, People, some people would jump on and ask me to sing. So I was like, okay, I think I'm going to make a different channel. <laughs> and I just thought of the name Singer Elite. And on that channel, I kept giving tips, vocal tips, tips about making money as a singer, tips about managing your career, um, marketing yourself, stage performance, we lost your mic again. Right now? No, it's back. Am I back? Okay. Yeah. So just, I started growing a following of people that were interested in just that, in improving either their singing skills or their music management, learning more about the business. And that grew into actual courses that I decided to create because right. there was such a, a demand for it. I did create a Facebook group, Singer Elite Community. And just saw that, yeah, there was a true interest and there wasn't much education out for singers. You know, there's a lot for musicians um, and songwriters, things like that. But for singers, it's sort of like you just sort of, okay, I'm really. Oh, we lost you again. Oh, okay. hang on. Sure, no, we uh, can hear. We can hear again. You can hear again? Okay. Yeah. So, um. I was happy to see that I could really bring value and help singers to learn about the business because I just see a lot of singers that have a lot of talent, but since they don't know how to manage their careers, 
-hmm. they end up giving up or they end up being very jaded, very bitter and just feeling like, well, it's just impossible. There's no way, you know, so Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go get a day job and that's it. You know, what are some of the biggest challenges that singers face? Besides competition. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) So I think it's honestly knowing how to market themselves. Right. Because if they don't have their own manager, if they're not signed to a music label, um, it's not the end of the world. But you have to know how to navigate the new new music industry, which has been blessed by the Internet that has opened up so many doors for you to be able to market yourself and grow your own fan base and manage your own money and sell your own products, make your own merchandise. We lost you for a second. And, oh, I'm there sorry. We go. You were, there we go. Okay. People didn't have, have, you know, don't want to take the time to study it because a lot of artists in general are just like, Oh no business. Oh no. Selling. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I just want to make my art and, you know, touch lives and touch hearts and whatever. And I'm like, yeah, okay. But to do that, (laughs) you have to know how to sell yourself. You're a product. There's no way around it. You know what I mean? We provide a service. We provide an experience. But um, you can also be played by, by, by managers, by agents, not being able to read contracts correctly and things. That can mess you up as well. So I think those are the... Those are the the challenges that I see most singers having. They're just like, I don't know how to get booked. I don't know, you know, mm-hmm. because it comes down to marketing. And yeah. I just find that that um, besides just the internet itself and all the wonderful platforms we have available, it's also um, just the, the the fact that live streaming has created such a, an amazing experience. For, especially for singers, because I feel like, yes, you can play a, um, um, an instrument and it's beautiful, but there's like a personal connection when somebody's looking at you in your eyes on live stream and singing to you, yeah. you know, and, and it's, it's powerful. Um, I've, I've definitely experienced, you know, moments where it's, it's just been emotionally intense because, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm reading the comments of people and they're like, oh my God, you're making me cry. Like, oh, that was just incredible. And and that's powerful because it literally is just like being on a stage. Like I found the same jitters, the same panic and fear and anxiety right. when I first started on Periscope that I did when I first started on the stage. Like it took me months to actually get the courage to go live. Right, right. We, we lost you again for a second. So sorry. Oh, there but you I are. Pref- Okay, I've performed, you know, hundreds of concerts, mm-hmm. but for some reason, live streaming was like, oh, but I can't see the eyes of the people watching me. You know what I mean? So oh, it's that's a bit how I felt intimidating. You know, when yeah. I started live streaming, I mean, I, I obviously had worked in radio and big audiences and all that, but you just weren't really that conscious of them, right? It's really you right. in the room and a bunch of mysterious people out there, whatever. And now people are looking. Like the first time I went on Facebook Live, I was really nervous. I was like. And friends and family can see me. You know, (laughs) they were never listening to me when I was on the radio. Um, (laughs) But it's it's fun. It's so much fun. Um, I just want to say a quick hello. Claudia Santiago, a terrific singer herself, is here. Uh, Hi, Claudia. Sarah Cook, welcome. Um, Now, I, of course, am too polite to ask you if you would be singing on the show. I would never sabotage you like that. But Sarah did ask, uh, Sarah Wiseman asks, uh, will there be singing today? I mean, why not? (laughs) If you can hear over this wonderful music that we have. (laughs) (laughs) I already have the backing track, right? That's right. There's your backing track. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, guys. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, I I would be happy to sing for you. Would you like to do that now or later or what? Why don't we uh, Why don't we build up to it as okay, as people sure. come come along? Uh, I, I do want to get into the live streaming thing a little bit. Um, how was it for you making the decision to live stream? Was it like at first just a marketing thing, or was it just that you know, no, another way to practice? But okay, I'll practice in front of people. Were you a little oh, like resentful that, okay, you've got all this training and this is how you have to market yourself on the internet before you knew what it was, you know? 
<laughs> Honestly, I was fascinated. You know, mm-hmm. back at the end of 2015, I had never, yeah, I had never seen anything like Periscope. You know, I wasn't right. part of the the other platforms before or anything, and I was just like, "What? You mean I could just like connect with people from around the world, right?" I was watching certain people. I'm really, I love personal development, for example. So I was watching certain broadcasters and getting a lot of value from just watching. And then I started discovering artists that I knew from New York that were performing. And I was like, oh, he's on? Oh, really? Okay, so like I could do this thing? Like, <laughs> you know? And it was, it was interesting to see the interaction. And I was like, hey, it's me, it's me, you know, typing in the comments and just like, do you remember me from like, you know, way back? And I just felt, okay, this is a direct community, direct to fan, you know what I mean? And um, I was like, this is fascinating. The more I watched and the more I got involved with the other musicians that were live streaming and got involved with Perry Stars, and then I created my own um, kind of... Um, what would you call that? Like a tr- Perry train, right? Mm-hmm. Of, of musicians that would perform at this certain time and we'd have a showcase and we'd grow each other's followings by cross promoting and right. all of that. And, and I was like, this is just really interesting because the music industry hasn't seen this sort of phenomenon yet. Mm-hmm. And so I was, you know, sending people to my website. And then I started really observing some people that were trying, that were being quite creative and, you know, being able to peer into the life of a street musician like Claire Means, who you may know. Um, anyone on Periscope that's been on Periscope for a while knows a singer named Claire Means. Uh, she's not in the mainstream <laughs> media, but she became massively known on the platform, grew a huge following by basically being a street musician. So she was used to performing for like five hours on the street every day. And so all she did was flip on her Paris, her phone right. and just broadcast it instead of just having a couple people go by, you know, okay, maybe a hundreds would walk by and just kind of look at her and walk by and few would throw in some coins. Maybe one <laughs> or two would stop and buy a CD from that. She grew a massive following online, like through Periscope, sent people straight to her website where she already was very organized with her business. She had right. merchandise, CD bundles, um, just, you know, her mailing list organized. And in, a, in a, like three, four months, she had already tripled her, her monthly revenue wow. by PayPal tips. You know, because the thing is, the longer you stay on live on any platform, the more people you're going to have coming in to see what you're doing. (laughs) Right, right. And so out of that, there's going to be a percentage, no matter how small, that likes what you're doing and that became super fans. And what she did a year later was um, had a, a, uh, I don't know if it was on GoFundMe. No, I think it was on, it was either on Kickstarter or Indiegogo or one of the platforms, she did a crowdfunding campaign for her new album because she's like, wow, I just, I have all these people that watch me every day. Like I, I should probably create a new album. Like, <laughs> it's kind of a good time to do some crowdfunding. So, so she did a crowdfunding campaign with the initial goal, I believe of around 10 or $15,000 to record this new album. Right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> In no time. She raised almost thirty thousand wow. dollars just by going live on Periscope and Busker Facebook Live. Wow. Told people what she was doing. <laughs> people got on board, and it was incredible. Four hundred, four hundred and twenty-three people backed that campaign, and she came out with that album, and of course, sold the album even more because all these people were excited to let everyone else know. <laughs> Wow. All their friends wow. know too. You know? Yeah, no, she's <laughs> that's amazing. It's an amazing uh, case study, really, of what is going on in the music industry and how live streaming is changing the game for so many independent artists. I, I was going to ask you. Now you just mentioned it about Busker. Have you tried yeah. Busker? I know Claudia Santiago is the one who actually introduced me to it, and um, 
I don't know whether you turn on the tip jar, so to speak, or pe- you sell your CD or anything, but you can, people can literally buy stuff while you're singing or talking or what have you. Absolutely. And I think it's the first, well, I believe it's the first platform of its kind where right. it's not that you're buying tokens or coins or some kind of mm-hmm. other kind of thing. It's <laughs> literally money that's going to go straight mm-hmm. to you um, that you can donate donate straight through. Um, I have tried it a couple times. I started and, you know, a whole lot of Periscopers, mm-hmm. you know, I, I was very, very much part of the, the music community for a, quite a while on Periscope and a lot of them left Periscope at the time that Busker started because they're like, Oh my God, we can literally get money straight. People don't have to go to a paypal.me to give me tips. And, um, and so, and there were fewer trolls. It was a new Mm -hmm. platform. So it was a little uh, easier to manage for those uh, popular (laughs) live streamers. Yeah. So, but what, um, what I felt was, it was just not in my heart to like start on a new mm-hmm. a new platform at that time that was so not supported yet you know right you right. start on periscope you knew it was already bought by twitter so mm-hmm. it probably would have you know would grow quite quickly time <laughs> to really right. you know and i was like okay so how much could i possibly make as well i was trying to calculate you know like i don't know i was, I was looking at the big 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 um, most popular musicians on there and i was like yes it's another income stream and yes if i had another device maybe i would just live stream on periscope and face and busker at the same time you know but, so i may i may still do that but right right yeah, well you, you I, didn't think that the income was probably worth worth the effort of the effort doing I, the double or triple i don't know right, right, <laughs> yeah right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Alberto says musicians can reach their audience very fast online. Uh, the better thing is that is that is global. Absolutely, absolutely, Alberto. Yes, yes. It's um, that's it's it's just it's beautiful because basically, a lot of artists, if they're just local, you know, once they exhaust their friends and family, <laughs> you know, inviting them to their concerts and trying to right. connect with people at open mics or whatever. I'm talking about really like amateur kind of just getting started artists. It's frustrating. <laughs> it's frustrating because you're like, how can I grow this fan base locally? Right. You know, everybody already knows me. They don't want to see me perform 15 times in this like three months. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, guys, I have another gig. Come again. You know, it's <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> Uh, we we lost your audio for a second. Um, this is live stream stars with our guest Zania Noah, and we lost her audio for just a second, but she should be she back in a second. Can you? Uh, Am I back? You can. We can hear you now. Um, okay, awesome. Sarah has a question. She says, "Have you yeah. had to deal with trolls? And if so, Absolutely. how do you how do you handle it?" Yeah, troll, trolls were like just like part of the <laughs> part of the experience of periscope at least back when i was you know streaming all the time um i just i just really was very quick Mm -hmm. finger quick with blocking them (laughs) i didn't because i saw some people really you know they'd be on point they'd they'd be either teaching something or just chatting with their followers and or singing or performing and they they would literally stop Mm -hmm. and address the troll and I was like, okay, that's actually kind of disrespectful to the people that are actually taking the time to watch you, whatever you're doing, because they're focused on you. So don't, you, it's just like when you're doing a concert live on stage. Mm-hmm. When you're live on stage, there's going to be always like that one or two drunk guys who are screaming obscenities or you know, trying to just like get attention for, for themselves. And I just ignore them or I ridicule them quickly and then get on with them what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Um, so I just handle it the exact same way on live stream. Um, but the easiest thing for me was just simply to block them because the, the longer you let them just say stuff, it, it starts distracting the other people watching. And the other people watching, if they are supportive of you, start taking time to re.
they're an idiot and all those things right, like, okay, right. you, guys, you guys were getting off the subject let's stay focused <laughs> on whatever you know we're doing here so and what the troll really I what the it. trolls really want is attention anyway they just so. want attention that's and i know that from from life in general just being a woman <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> if, if if you really you know the obnoxious guy in the bar just wants attention so if you ignore him believe me he will leave you he will, he will just leave you alone <laughs> right right it's too embarrassing <laughs> right <laughs> so no no yeah. trolls there right now we are right no it is so incredibly dead here right right now that's why i'm like why don't you just turn off the music there's nobody here <laughs> how, how late do bars stay open there two o'clock Two o'clock. So it's one thirty four a.m. right now. So, so yeah. we know that we have a on a Monday. Time. On a Monday, it's, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so tell me about um, how you got interested in Whitney Houston when you first heard her. How she inspired you? I know you're you were called by TV Guy the next Whitney Houston, and I was watching um, your video from the American Idol whatever they call it in France, right? I'll, I'll yes. butcher the pronunciation. No problem. And, and at first, I like I got chills. I'm like, you sound just like her in singing it. And okay. I mean, I know you have totally your own style and you do a variety of different kinds of music, but you were singing um, I Want to Dance with Somebody and you sounded just like her. And I, I mean, not to give away exactly where I live, but she's like buried down the road from where I live. Yes. So it was like, wow. I mean, <laughs> it was unbelievable. Do you know, have you, you've been told that, right? Like when you sing her stuff, you almost sound like her or I'm, I'm not hearing you. Sorry. Possibly. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Here we go. Can, can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. It's the biggest compliment to me because Whitney Houston, I discovered when I was about eight or nine and she just blew me away. I was like, okay, that's it. I know what I want to be when I grow up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be Whitney Houston. <laughs> like I said, I'm going to be a singer. I'm going to be with you. <laughs> so I, I mean, she is my idol. She will always be my idol. Um, she literally is, yes, the reason I sing professionally today. So mm -hmm. I, I got to finally see her live in Switzerland uh, in 2010. And of course I cried like a baby. And, um, but it, it was just so, she has touched and blessed the lives of so many people, no right. matter how she ended her life, no matter what kind of, you know, negative things we can throw on her. It's just like Michael Jackson. These people have left us a legacy that's going to inspire for generations and generations. You know what I mean? Like, it's like that, you, she, you know, nothing can take that away. Right, right. And so, so I think it's just. I was so happy that I was able to see her just a few years before she passed, and um, and I think that I listened to her so much growing up that I, Jody, so much growing up that it's like it's sort of almost logical that I that I mm -hmm. can, you know, get my voice to sound like her when when I sing her songs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I never <laughs> heard anybody sound quite like somebody else like that i mean it was amazing and thank you and it's not like i i think you want to have your own songs and own them and you do so it's not like an insult like oh you're just copying her no, no, but it's i'm like, telling you it's it was totally like a tribute the way you sang you. it i mean I, I almost thought you were her for a second it was like <laughs> really <laughs> reincarnated <laughs> but now in your own in yeah. your own music that you write and perform and everything you've yeah. woven in a whole bunch of different influences. Whitney kind of steered towards the pop side of R and B and you weave in yes. sort of a deeper jazz sound and soul influences and so forth. Talk about how your sort of your sound and your music came together. Well, um, and just before I do that, I'm going to just acknowledge Bobby Helms. Bobby, it is so nice to see you here. Thank you so much for watching. We were literally at the same concert in 2010 in Geneva. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you for being here, Bobby. Um, so, I mean, I started writing songs when I was probably... At age 10, 11, 12, something like that. Yeah, Chris. Um, it's good to see you. Very good to see you. It was great to meet you. Um, I always loved soul music, like, you know, the kind of 
old school soul, Aretha Franklin, and then sort of like the Diana Ross and then Shaka Khan and of course Whitney. So when I started writing with musicians, it sort of started sounding more soulful. And I started performing on stage with bands here in Switzerland when I was 15 and being paid to sing and everything. And, and those bands in the beginning were hip hop, R&B, soul funk. Um, and then I did some reggae and things like that, but that really just had an influence on the, on my creations following, following that. So throughout my teens, I worked with um, pianists and guitarists and just wrote for fun and right. then got more serious about it later and just like, okay, I'm going to try to get something together and actually make an album. And I, and I finally did. And I was, it, it took, <laughs> took a whole lot of work, but I'm proud right, of the right. album. Yeah. And that's rising, right? That is the rising album. Yeah. And where can people find that? So you can find it at azania.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Azania.com Azania. has Azania. the links to everything, iTunes, um, right, right. Amazon, Spotify, everything is directly linked there. Are you thinking about doing another album or are you working on another I, one? You know, I am actually. I, I'm kind of interested in, in using live streaming to do what some artists do. Sorry, we we lost you for a second. Is on. Which is okay. Here you are. Now we lost you again. <laughs> We're talking with Azania Noah, a uh, singer. She's coming to us from Europe. It is late there. <laughs> and okay, here we go. I think we got you back. Am I back? Okay, yeah. hang on. My iTunes just started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what that is. I thought they turned it back up in the bar. <laughs> it was my, yeah. Anyways, can you hear me well? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in using live streaming when I do create my next album mm -hmm. because it's always interesting to take, to bring people along with you during your creative process. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people find it fascinating to be kind of behind the scenes, whether it's a visual artist, a dancer, whatever, but watching somebody create something new, I think mm -hmm. is fascinating. And I think, that it would be interesting to get the feedback because what artists have been, what singers and musicians have, have done um, in the past is simply perform the new songs a lot, see right. which ones resonate the most. And then those songs are what go on the album. Mm -hmm. And so in this, in this way, you wouldn't even have to do, you know, concerts out of your home. You could actually just perform the songs for people right, see. Right. Oh, we lost you again. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you're saying um, you yeah. could perform the songs on live stream rather than perform them uh, in concert and get the feedback right yeah. away, right? And, and by exactly. looking at the chat, you probably get more realistic, honest feedback than you would in a concert where if anybody actually comes up to you, oh, it was great, it was great. But in a chat, like people you know will be like, oh, do it this way. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, it's, it's also, okay. I think it's a good uh, combination to do both. Right. Right. Because, because for, you know, you can, you can sense a lot from an mm -hmm. audience. Like after so many, I've done hundreds of concerts and I can, I can feel an audience really well. Mm -hmm. And so you do want to, you do want to get that, that kind of like visceral, visceral and visual feedback right. as well because right. you can only read comments on live stream but i do think it's 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 a great you know sounding board to start with mm -hmm. and just to get stuff out you know um maybe you have an idea like at 3 a.m or something and you're like hey this sounds kind of cool and then you put something together and you can quickly go on the next day and, and ask people what they think right or right. you can ask them for like themes or like hey you know i'm i'm i got writer's block guys give me some ideas what what are you going through maybe i can write a song about it you know yeah um yeah so yeah, you know uh, i don't know if you know coach jenny um but she actually wrote her book using uh live streaming by talking yes. about the different topics to her community and then finding out what they were struggling with and things like that and then incorporating those into different chapters and different stories in, in her book. So 
uh, live streaming. And, and I know a lot of speakers also test concepts with live streaming before they go up and they do a keynote or something like that. So it's, exactly. it's an amazing platform. It's more than just for selling something. There are so many yeah. different things you can do with it. And I think when you do those things, you're, you're also deepening the connection with your with your fans and with your community because it's the ultimate yes. respect to say, I'm willing to bring you into the process. And I, I think that's what we all loved about Mario Armstrong with the Never Settle show is how much he shared with us behind the scenes what he was going through to get that show on the air. Exactly, exactly. And um, I'm, I'm about to be interrupted, yes? Oui, je comprends, je comprends. Je vais bientôt arrêter. Voilà. Merci beaucoup. Okay, merci. Um, the thing is, Mario, I think he's just, first of all, Mario's incredible. <laughs> but I think one thing that Mario captured, and he was one of the first people I watched on live stream when I started on Periscope, is his energy. Like, he understands, since he's, he's coming from national TV, he understands how much you have to give when you're live. blown with the the connection the feedback the, c the communication the bond you can form with people and he's created a very solid community of of people who share the same passions right and and who are totally behind the message of never settling in life you know and i right, think that right. that is one thing that i oh, well i really encourage singers and musicians and just artists in general to to build and nurture Mm -hmm. that connection and the communicate because people I mean back in the days it was impossible to I mean right. Rolling Stones uh, Michael Jackson these people were untouchable mm -hmm. you know you could just admire them admire them from afar admire them from the audience in the concerts maybe get to touch their foot or something one day but it's like right. now for an independent artist literally you feel like you're their friend you're communicating with them like maybe even daily on live stream and i think that that is what is so amazing because that's what creates a super fan a super fan is somebody who who literally is so in love with what you do they'd buy anything from you and they're so these are the people that are going to spread the word about what you do and grow mm -hmm. You're following, which is your livelihood as an artist. So I think that's something that should not be neglected just out of fear, out of fear of judgment, out of fear of... And judgment, you know, it's not just about like, oh, I don't know if I can sing well or I don't know if my songs are good. It's judgment coming from people that you know as well. Mm -hmm. Because because of the fact if you go live on Facebook, you got your family, you've got your friends that you knew in like primary school or whatever, elementary school or whatever. And so it's, it's daunting, but mm -hmm. the people that really resonate with you and your music and who you are with a big capital W right. um, are the ones that you should really care about anyway. You know, right. you, can, you can have your family at Thanksgiving and whatever, and maybe they'll rid <laughs> ridicule you. Oh, you're still doing that. understand and your fans understand and they appreciate the time that you're spending connecting with them and that you know that you value their opinion on things and you're taking them backstage and you're taking them um you know on your trips and just you share who you are with them which is so important because it's not just about the music it's about they connect to who you are what you represent and that is what they're resonating with and it becomes so much deeper when you when you take the time to do that. Well, when you talk about connecting, I mean, I think of the the video of you from from The Voice and how you and I mean, it must have been everything from song selection to how you rehearsed. But you had like an arc of that performance and it just like you got everybody to like just join in almost like at a certain point. It was just like, OK. Except for that one guy, it took him a little while to turn the chair around. But the, but it was like obvious they were going to vote for you. They just didn't want to do it too quick. I think some of them were you were you like totally confident going into that that you had everything in place. To, I, I didn't like, sleep oh, for I days. Was, I did really? not sleep for days. Yeah, because the thing is, like when I was when I did the one that was similar to American Idol, mm -hmm. I was it was like thirteen years ago, and I didn't know as much as I know now about marketing. 
And so when I did that show, um, there was no social media. Social media mm -hmm. didn't exist when I did that first show. So by the time The Voice came around, it was like, oh, my God. You know, yes, there are 8 million viewers for the TV show, but this thing is going to be shown again and again and right. again and again. And people are going to see it on YouTube and people are going to refer to it. And, like, it's going to be like a calling card. Like, how did she do in the blind audition, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that was what was nerve wracking for me because I had a view of the whole picture at that point. You know, I studied business in, in university. I have a master's degree in international business. So I took the time to learn after doing that other show, you know, you know about marketing. And I was right. just like, oh man, so much is riding on this, this performance, you know? Right, right. And so, and so of course I really should have just stayed calm and let it, you know, just <laughs> go with the flow, was that, you know, but it was, yeah, it was also because I was more mature. I was older mm -hmm. and older than a lot of the other performers. Right. So I was like, Oh, we lost you for everywhere, whatever. Oh, okay. But, I mean, you knew anyway, that it was like, it was like so, an incredible I mean, opportunity to get that video. Incredible opportunity. I mean, be, everything from like the color that you wore to the, like the, the, you can see like from the American Idol one, how advanced the set is and like the whole yes. drama build up and everything. Like, so it all worked perfectly for you. <laughs> if you hit that home run that day, which you did. And, you know, I'm sure that probably the singing, it was probably the easiest part, right? <laughs> when you got everything together. I think you know, it's all, it's so much about the, the mindset. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's like performing in general is, is all up here. You know what I mean? Because people couldn't see how nervous I was. I only knew how nervous I was and how many days it took me to like, you know, try to like, just, just, you know, just also right. get good sleep and all of that because that affects the voice. You know, I was like, you have to sleep as I do. You got to sleep or else your voice is just not going to do what you need it to do. Alone on the voice. You know what I mean? You're, you're basically, it's such a funny feeling for somebody who's performed so many times with a band. All of a sudden, you're walking on a stage where the orchestra is far, far, far away, and then the judges are far, far, far in front, <laughs> and then you have this audience that's completely silent, and you just walk. You can just hear your little high heels <laughs> walking <laughs> along the stage to the microphone, and then you give a little nod, you know, and then they start the music, and um, and I, I literally was just like, Azania, just focus on the song. Don't focus on who's going to turn their red chair around, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I was just like, just nail the minute and a half. I saw the first chair turn, but by the end of the song, I was shocked to see that all four chairs had turned. I was like, what, what happened? When did that happen? Like, you know, right. Right. So, would you, so it was, I mean, what yeah. would you consider? I mean, would you consider that like, I don't know when you look at your career and you talk about like you think about what were the the highlight. I mean, because you've had so many performances and everything, would you consider that like a top highlight of your career? The way that absolutely. That came? What what else? Could, I, I know you've performed a lot of different places. We don't have time to get into everything, but what else would you say were like top highlights of your your career? I would say um, uh, performing for the president of my country because I performed for the president of Sierra Leone. That was incredible. Um, Tony Blair, Blair was also there. And um, performing for at the Apollo Theater and just mm -hmm. seeing my name literally, <laughs> like even besides the performance, seeing my name on the marquee of the Apollo Theater was a childhood dream because I had seen Whitney Houston's name mm -hmm. on the Apollo Theater. And I know that the greatest love of all video, if you watch the video, it's in the Apollo. It's set in the Apollo and you see, you see little Whitney mm -hmm. on, and on like, you know, her first concert or whatever and then right, you see right. the big Whitney that like they meet in the middle and it's all dramatic and I cried like a baby when I was like nine when I watched that so for me it was just like coming full circle oh my gosh like <laughs> what what did you so, sing at the Apollo I sang my own my own songs from the rising album mm -hmm. I sang ac actually a few um African songs as well I had I I like to mix and that's probably what I'll do on my next album is mix a little bit of of um African uh, instruments with my soulful sound. Right, and right. so it was, it was just 
yeah, I would say those definitely were at the top of my memorable moments. Right, right. <laughs> And was that was that part of a, a music festival, or was that your own gig, or what was like? What was, it was the part event? Of a music festival. It was a festival that the Apollo put on. And how how yeah. did how did you find the audience? I know the Apollo audience can definitely let you know if they're not into <laughs> it, right? Well, if it's yeah, and it's 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 um the. When you're at the amateur night at the Apollo, definitely. Well, that's where. But yeah. if, if it's a normal, <laughs> if it's just a normal concert, they're very respectful. <laughs> right, right, right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it was an amateur yeah, night. Yeah. It was not amateur night. No. <laughs> <laughs> get out! Get out! <laughs> so no, we have, I know we yeah. only have a few minutes left till they shut down yeah. the bar, and it's uh, approaching yeah, eight he's, o'clock. He's already giving me this, actually. <laughs> If you want to sing, I, we would love it if you sang a few bars of something for us. Uh, it's your choice, whatever you. All like right, for the with. live stream universe crew, guys. First of all, I want to thank everyone for watching this. Thank you guys for watching the replay, Ross. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'll sing like a few bars of a song for you um, that I wrote. Okay. <laughs> um. Every baby is born, born with all the innocence and hope we adore. Depends on others to live and learn how to get around in this world. My favorite thoughts of you give me so much feeling because I'm so into you. I got you here in my dream. Don't you know I'm hoping that one day you'll come true? We all deserve a life of liberty With food and shelter and care if we're suffering Free from the pains of war, greed and power Free to fulfill our dreams You belong With the birds and the trees and the skies up above you belong at the peak of Mount Kilimanjaro. You belong in fields of shining flowers and gold. You belong to the beauty of the world. Thank you, Ross. Wow, that was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. This is so much fun. And thank you for staying up. Guys, late. get on live really stream. Appreciate it. <laughs> and so My up pleasure. and coming singers who would like to work with you or like to be coached or can go to singerelite.com. They can go to singerelite.com. Um, everything is there. Um, you can also, if you're interested in singing lessons, because mm -hmm. I do give singing lessons by Skype and Zoom. So just online right um i have most of my students are online uh you can go to singersjoy.com <laughs> singersjoy.com will take you straight to that page on the website and if you're interested in learning more about the business learning more about managing to singer elite biz biz.com and Sarah, Sarah, Sarah has actually worked with yes. me. Yes. <laughs> She's done my business course and she really enjoyed it. And you, you can follow Azani on social media at Azania Noah. And the website is Azania.com. Check out her rising uh, CD album, whatever. I don't know what to call it anymore because it's all that. Everybody <laughs> gets everything in downloads. I, I, if I, <laughs> I don't mind as long as they, as long as, as, long they, as they, you buy know, it. Enjoy no. Right. Well, as, as long as, yeah, and then, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> You're right. kicking me out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> he looks serious. <laughs> All right, I'll let you go. Thank you so much, Azani. It's great having much you on. Much love to you, Ross. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you when you're back in New York. Back. All right. Take, Take care, care, everyone. That's Azani and Noah. Thanks so much, Azania, for joining us. And this is the final episode of Livestream Stars for the summer. We'll be back with a new episode on October 2nd. Also, a new show coming next week. Uh, do check it out. It's called 
live stream deals, and it'll be Thursday, September seventh uh, at seven Eastern. Easy for me to say. Uh, Thursday, September second at seventh. Okay, let me start again. Let me start again. <laughs> I was listening to uh, the noise from the bar. Uh, so Thursday, September 7th at 7 p.m. Eastern, the show is going to be called Livestream Deals. We're going to feature products and services uh, for people in the live streaming community, uh, a chance to hear from actually the people who make and provide those products and services and we're going to have a giveaway and and different deals and things like that. And then also another show uh, I should have coming out in middle of the month. Um, as soon as I have that all firmed up, I will uh, tell you about that. Uh, hey, Barb, how are you? Noise from the bar. Not where I'm at, where, <laughs> where Zania was. Uh, thanks for joining us, Barb. Uh, Jody, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, great to see you. Great to see everybody, Sarah, Sarah, both Sarahs, um, and everybody who's stuck along for the whole way. Uh, and do join us again Thursday night, September 7th, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the first episode of live stream deals. Have a great night, everybody.